we're going to peek inside a young girl's little blue book. Its pages, an intimate account of her love affair with Joran van der Sloot. Would her diary hint at what was to come? And Chris, you went to Aruba this week to hear her story. That's right, Elizabeth. And Melody Garadillo says Joran was her first love. And this diary shows where Joran started as a young man. Melody also says she's seen him change from a romantic teenager to a compulsive liar, and today, an accused monster. So what happened to the boy she once loved? I don't quite remember the time or how you did your hair. I don't recall what was on my mind or who else was there. It's a but poem called you... Unforgotten, Unforgettable Love. Our noses rubbed before our lips touched. I remember Filled with the tenderness and sincerity of a first love. It was the moment I fell in love with you. It's from the diary of Melody Granadillo, who saved everything from her dashing Dutch suitor who flooded her with sweet sentiments. Your eyes looking into mine, stopping the feeling of time. Hard to imagine, it's the same man now locked up in a Peruvian jail who police say confessed to murder, Joran van der Sloot. How can you connect the young man that you've known with somebody who would beat someone to death for money and then casually eat breakfast and leave? It's not connectable. We can't connect that. It's not the same person. Melody has stayed close to Joran through his apparent descent into darkness and is struggling with everyone else to understand how he could go from this to this. I know some things, little things, I can bring my piece of the puzzle. Do you wish you had never met him? I don't, I don't regret our experience together. They met at a mutual friend's birthday party in Aruba. It's October 2003, and for seven intense months, 16-year-old Melody is head over heels in love with the man she calls Chi-Chi, or Mr. Wiggles. We liked looking into each other's eyes. What did you see when you looked into his eyes? I saw a very honest person, and he was very full of life, very, he was ambitious, he was smart. So. You were his first big love. Mm -hmm. So he said. Now you question everything, right? Of <laughs> course. Who doesn't? We begin inside this little blue diary, which contains photos and material Melody licensed to us. There is page after heart-filled page, pictures, cards, every possible expression of love from a young man many now say is incapable of love. You kept a diary, the movie tickets, all the poems, all the texts. We talked about marriage. <laughs> we talked about kids. Yorin emails Melody two pages of I love you includes an essay about how love is the strongest of all feelings. This handwritten poem says, you are my star of love. You are indeed my guiding light. How was he as a boyfriend? It was amazing. It was romantic. I told him I like red Skittles. And what he did was he made this vase at school, a glass vase. He went and bought a lot of um, Skittle packets. He took all of the red ones out. As a present, I got a vase full of red skittles. So he did things like that. He was very thoughtful. As the teen romance blossoms, Melody writes of their first sexual encounters. We fooled around a lot. He wanted a lap dance. I barely gave it. It was an awesome night, romantic and fun. But by page 81, Melody is beginning to question young Yoren. She writes, he went to a party, and I was wondering why it took him so long to call. I started being suspicious of text messages, him being sneaky. Like, he was very good, good at it. He was good at being sneaky? Yeah. Even though you knew you had him, you knew he was lying? He would cry, he wouldn't let me go. If I wanted to go, he told me, he'd be like, very determined that I had to believe him. And if you caught him in it, he would double down and be even more serious about the story now, right? He would always tell me, Melody, a relationship is built on trust. You have to trust me. But turns out, he couldn't be trusted at all. Joran was cheating on her. So the whole time there was somebody else? More than one. It was then that Melody says she saw Joran's dark side, which would develop even faster than their love. He can have all those girls. He's going to have all those girls, and I'm not going to know about it and he'll tell you what you need to hear. Mm -hmm. And change his story yet again. Years later, he would pen a sensational tell-all with another version. You said to him, you lied to me, you cheated on me, all these things you said were true weren't true. 
His response? That it's the past. It happened. People change. He says that. People change, Melody. People change. And it seems Joran von der Sloot changed in the worst way. Also, the latest on the missing honor Meanwhile, hundreds of volunteers are searching the Caribbean to island out for... what happened to 18-year-old Natalie Holloway. So when Natalie Holloway disappears, mm -hmm. and you hear that Joran is connected... I didn't believe it. The idea of him being violent around women. Had you ever seen anything like that? No. Just keep going, I think, that's In fact, Melody gets involved in the search for Natalie, feeling connected because of Joran and something else. She was born on the same day, same year as me. The same, so I felt, yeah. the same day and year? Same day and year. That's weird, huh? That's very weird. But even That's more weird, weird, weird would be what Melody yeah, saw weird. watching Joran during arms, interviews, arms, talking right. about Natalie. Do you remember the last time you saw her? Yeah, the last time I saw her, she was sitting in the, on the sand by the ocean. She sees a frighteningly walk, familiar of pattern of changing stories. And, uh, Melody went cold. After a while, after he started changing his story, then I thought, oh my God, here we go again. As soon as you heard that he was lying? He panicked. I thought he probably panicked and did what he always does best. <laughs> he covered up. The stakes are much higher, but it seems Jorn is playing the same old game, pretending to be the victim, saying everyone else has it all wrong. I know I didn't do anything wrong and I know I didn't do anything bad. And for me, really, that's all that matters. So I can go on with my life, keeping my head up high. Even to Melody, Yoren never betrays a whisper of guilt. She says he would always say everything's fine, embarking on a whirlwind life captured in pictures on Facebook. <laughs> Travels in Thailand, his partying, and of course, all the new women he's meeting. But Yoren eventually returns to the island, which includes meeting up again with Melody. Whatever he's telling authorities, Melody says she sees through his facade. You don't think he's that person anymore? The spirit is gone. He's different. Melody says the weight of whatever happened with Natalie and what she says is an all-consuming gambling addiction overwhelmed Joran in Peru. Soon enough, Joran texted Melody looking for money. He texts, I have some cash with me, so I'm fine. Just lost the bank card, and the ticket back today is $520. I would have liked to be able to be back today, but can't do anything about it. So much bad luck sometimes. He contacts me, and he asks me if I can send him, I think, $200. Did he tell you why he needed the money? To buy tickets to come to Aruba. Melody didn't send the money, worrying it would be spent on gambling. She now wonders what would have happened if she had sent it, because police say that very same day, a desperate Yoren meets Stephanie Flores. Do you ever wish that you had tried to stop his going down the wrong path? I did feel guilty. Maybe if I stayed in his life, nothing would happen. Yoren's texts stop, and the news breaks of Stephanie Flores's murder. While police say he has yet to show any remorse, his longtime friend is pained. What did you think when you saw the picture? He looks a bit like me. Coincidence? Coincidence. Kind of shake you up a little bit? Yeah. No, it could have been me. The one-time love of her life now faces life behind bars, and Melody faces questions she may never really answer. How do you explain it to yourself? I still don't get it. What is the hardest thing for you to deal with emotionally in the situation? To see him change the way he did. And become the person he is. I know him differently. You know? He was a caring person. Just two days ago, Melody received an email from Joran's mother, Anita, who's never spoken publicly about the events in Peru. In it, she tells Melody, pray for Joran. He's not the monster they like the world to see. He is traumatized, depressed, and has an addiction. He is not a murderer. It stinks and feels like a big trap set up for him. You can read more of Melody and Joran's diary on 2020's webpage at abcnews.com.